up tell me there's a lot of people wondering about this medicine experience bond university in australia so would you like to talk a little bit about it yeah so um i think what bond university provides is a, a much better student to faculty ratio so um because the numbers are so little and it's a private university you get offered much more um individualized uh learning which right. is great so Uh, with a lot of other universities you may just be a number in the pile whereas at bond we know all our teachers they all know us um and that makes it a lot easier to ask questions and to get help with research projects and all that sort of stuff so that there's definitely that personalized element which makes it fantastic so how large is your batch so um we've got about 90 people in um in, all, in the one year in the second yes, year yes yeah as against the other unit the, the public uh, university so with public universities they all have it's all very different the government um sets seats for each university but then a larger un- university like uh, the university of queensland up in brisbane has uh, i think around 200 in the year in a class yeah okay okay so it um it depends on the size of the university so the government mostly funds a lot of us so um and they need to have seats available for us in the hospitals right right so um yeah so they have a cap but they have a limit on it so tell me yours is a very special five year program yes and it's an md program yep. now i've not heard of this anywhere in the world where in 5 years you're doing an, an md program so tell us a little bit about this so uh, one thing i think i probably ca- clarify in the start is the difference between an md program and how it's perceived in india and how it's perceived over here so it's not specialization it's more uh, along the lines of um research so you've um done a research paper you've published that sort of stuff so okay, okay. uh so you kind of specialize in a mini topic really <laughs> the course that i'm currently doing used to be an mbbs course slowly all the universities in australia are changing to md as well like basically the first 3 years of the degree are a medical studies degree you have an out at that point if you want it but it, really nobody takes it and uh then you get an md in the last 2 years so the degree at bond is an accelerated degree uh compared to other universities so you get less holiday time a lot of the degree is um condensed yeah. uh which yeah. means you've basically got to be on top of it all the time no large four month <laughs> no. vacation <laughs> nothing like that no four month vacation or anything i think um all the other bond courses are the same so bond university offers accelerated courses and that's their specialty really so a lot of people get a four year degree done in two two and a half years wow uh depending on what sort of a course it is it's fantastic uh, because everyone it's great you would do this mbbs md equivalent at for 35 if i got into an undergraduate degree at another university um i would have graduated probably around uh, maybe 25 26 but um at bond i graduate um the moment i turn 23 i'm graduated i'm and i'm working at 23 as a wow. doctor So wow. there's a big difference that way. Huge for medicine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we've got 5 years. So the first year is everything that's normal with the body. Um the second year is everything that goes wrong. So that's your pathology um that they add in and then you also add in your the pharmacology or the drugs and stuff. Um and then in third year you you do a lot of clinical work oh, so right. it's basically a year where you can integrate your learning to get ready for your clinical years in fourth and fifth year which are mostly in the hospital so in third year you um they take you off campus and they go to this place called Bond Virtual Hospital and it's basically a teaching hospital so over there you work with um student physiotherapists student nurses other allied health uh, students it's a simulated hospital we have um actor patients that come in and then we have um dummies and all as well so you you know you help the dummy give birth oh. and you do those sorts of things so um it's before you're put around the actual patients right. it's a lot of self study though okay so um most of your study happens in the library and stuff you'll have about one lecture a week at that point oh, okay. in, third in, third in third year in third year so that year is very different yeah, yeah. sounds fun and the first one or two years is it largely lectures is it small group teaching uh. so they call the lectures large group resource sessions because they um encourage people to have discussions in the middle of it and then we also have workshops so around like pharmacology workshops so understanding how um what drug to give why would you give one drug over another how the drug works that sort of stuff um and then you'll have your practicals like you would usually have in the labs 
um, and um, you'd have problem-based learning. It's basically the entire course revolves around problem-based learning. So it's called PBL, and basically what PBL is is um, a group of about eight students who mimic um, a group of doctors and how you would go through a case um, and how you would um, think about all the aspects surrounding that patient. So um, you look at all the scientist and scholar aspects, you look at the health advocate and professional aspects, and then you look at the practitioner aspects. So you incorporate all of that um, to analyze cases. So that whole week you focus on that uh, case? Yes, so uh, the way it works is you get um, triggers, which is basically how a patient would normally present to you. They'd come in first, maybe they'll just say, you know, oh, you know, my legs are really swollen okay. and um, I feel really short of breath. And then, so that's your first um, instance. You know, so you will see that the patient is maybe obese, and they can't walk properly, they can't breathe properly, and then you'll take all of those symptoms and you'll put them together and you'll start drawing up a mind map to see maybe what's, you know, what, what do we think is going on? So that's your first step of diagnosis. Um, the second one will be maybe, okay, so the doctor has asked a few questions, we've gotten some more information. You add, the more, you add more information onto the board. Then after that, you'll get lab results, test results mm -hmm. back. Then based on that, you'll uh, narrow your diagnosis again. And then after that, all the lectures revolve around that case. Okay, okay. Yeah. So everything sort of fits into that, and one yeah. week you, you become an expert at handling that. Situation. That particular case, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Sajid, you sometimes feel more of a detective than a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess so, to, to an extent, yeah, absolutely. Because um, at the end of the day, you're a diagnostician, which is basically what you're doing as a detective. You're trying to figure out what's going on with this person. I mean, we've got uh, our practicals with the cadavers. And um, at that point, it'll be, again, so a PBL group works on one cadaver. And uh, we'll open the knob and we'll start looking through um, their organs and everything. And you'll find little pathologies here and there. And you'll find things that don't look very normal. And even though at this point we don't know much, you can tell, like, that's, that doesn't look right. And then afterwards, we get a history of the patient. And they all um, correlate really well. So it's quite exciting that way. Yeah. And it is, a lo it is like detective work, really. <laughs> Sachi, tell me, a high school student looking at a medicine career, yep. what subjects do you think they should take? Um, I think with Australia specifically, I think what's a good thing is that you you have required um, courses for uh, degrees in many cases. For medicine, it was chemistry. Uh, bio wasn't required. Was not required. Was not required. Oh, okay. Which is different. But uh, you can do uh, mini courses uh, after school. Um, for a couple of months to be on the same page that you're basically accredited to get into the degree. Okay, so if they're doing IB, yep. then they do higher level chemistry? So it's not, re no, that's not no, required. That's not required it's not required. Okay. Uh, a particular grade is required, okay. depending on if you do higher level or standard level. Right. Okay. But if they do it, and if they do, for example, higher level biology as well, mm -hmm. does that further help them accelerate the program? It doesn't accelerate the program, but it definitely helps you with your study. Okay. So if you've done high-level bio, it's even helping you third year in. Wow. Um, just because high-level bio in IB goes very, very in-depth. There was one piece of advice you would give a high school student on how to decide whether to do medicine or not. What is it that you would say to them? Now, really, I can only draw from my own experience <laughs> doing this. The, the way that I came to this decision was um, just really making a, a list of pros and cons and, you know, what sort of a person am I and what do I want to achieve from my life. I was talking with my parents quite a bit and we decided, you know, we were thinking about it and we're like, you know, I'm a compassionate person. I love solving puzzles. I love working with people. Um, and so we said, you know what, if you get the grades, we'll try for medicine. Um, and so we did that. I got the grades, <laughs> I got in, and then at first I was very apprehensive and I didn't really know if it was for me, but I jumped in and I loved it. But um, what I can say really is if you're on the fence a little bit, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. So if you're somebody who, do who doesn't really enjoy working with people, uh, doesn't like taking care of people, um, then maybe medicine is not really for you. It doesn't mean the medical field is not for you. There's lots of research opportunities and everything over there. You don't have to incorporate the clinical aspects of it right. because medicine is basically everything clinical. Yeah. It's people. You're working with people, you're making people better. The whole person, not just, you know, 
a tiny a little family. ailment. <laughs> exactly. You're not just fixing one cell, you're fix fixing the person. Right. And if you don't want to do that or does, that doesn't really interest you, um, then, you know, there are always other ways of being in the medical field, but it doesn't have to be by being a doctor. So like research, what are some of the other areas like if you've done medicine and you don't want to be a doctor, yep. what are the other things that someone could do? Right, so there are actually a lot of uh, different opportunities once you've done a medical degree. You can always go into the into the administration side, into the business side. Hospital management. Hospital management. Okay. It's always an option. I think um, if doctors aren't managing hospitals and people who don't know what a doctor's <laughs> life is like, you know, it's... Not exactly, a great hospital. <laughs> it's not. You know, you need, you need somebody to know what the profession is like to be able to uh, lead doctors. Then there's always, like you mentioned, you know, research. There's a there's a lot out there in research right now, and then research also includes um, uh, medical engineering and that sort of stuff. And there's always um, pathology, forensic pathology. There are also very cool new specialties, the niche specialties that are coming up nowadays. And obviously, it's very hard to get to those. They're very specific, and you really have to love what you're doing. So tell us but there's about that. So there's um, neonatal surgery is a new thing. So you can operate on babies while they're in the womb. In the womb? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Obviously, it's very, very tricky. You have to be very experienced to get to that level. And um, there's also um, underwater, they're underwater physicians. So they work with the military. Oh, wow. Yeah, and basically right. divers in the military. And so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff out there. You can always find something um, to fit what your current interests are. Okay. I'm saying to the high school students that if, if you're interested primarily in medicine, yep. don't look at it necessarily as taking you to being a doctor. Just look at it as, an, as a grounding. Yeah, absolutely. It'll take you to whichever path you want it to. Absolutely. So you're a great artist too. And how did you combine your art and, and, and medicine? First of all, thank you for calling me a great artist. <laughs> Only did it in high school, but yeah, I love art. Um, and uh, thankfully, I got the uh, opportunity to incorporate it into my degree earlier this year. We've got this uh, teacher, she's an um, ethics professor. And one thing she brought up was that um, observing art, making art, it makes you a much uh, better doctor because you have a better eye for detail, um, more empathy. Um, and so I made um, a clay sculpture, which was um, Basically, um, the whole idea behind it was to bring um, awareness to a forensic collection in uh, hospitals, um, especially with um, abuse victims, or sexual abuse or domestic abuse, and um, how improper handling of evidence can really destroy um, a victim's case. And so how we as doctors should be better trained in collecting this evidence so that that's never a problem, because that is our duty of care to them as well. So um, we, so I made the sculpture and uh, wrote an essay on it, and uh, it got um, published in the book. It won the first prize, which wow. is really, really exciting. Wow. In a book that the, that was um, edited by the same professor, Dr. Bramstead, and it's it's absolutely fantastic. So it's got a lot of my colleagues' artwork in there as well, and how they view different issues in medicine. So that was definitely a lot of fun. Wow. Yep. So thank, thank you so much, Sachi. I think that thank was fantastic, you. the experience of just talking to you, learning from you, and I'm sure our viewers are going to gain a lot from this. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Please click the subscribe button below. Like me at facebook.com slash chatchat101. Follow my Twitter handle, chatchat101 or at Instagram, chatchat101. Please leave your comments in the sections below. And if you'd like me to feature any particular college, please let me know. Thank you.